Hello dear friends, myself Dr. Shrikant Verma, MBBS MD Anatomy, Director Simple Medical Academy, Brainstorming Dhinchika Anatomy Classes. So here in this video, I am going to tell you what are the various important topics which can be asked in your NEET 2019. Yes, these are the topic of the expected questions for your NEET exam. Just I am going to summarize in this board. So yes, how you will prepare? You are knowing you have prepared entire year, you are knowing very well. But just a summary here, yes, for the proper study of the anatomy, we have to start with general anatomy, then embryology, and yes, we have to go with the histology also. We have to study any topic with the correlating embryology and the histology. But what are the probability to come in your exam? Yes, how many questions are going to be asked from the embryology and the histology? One question or two questions? From histology, yes, again, one question or two question. But for these topics, we are doing a lot of hard work. But output is less. That's why my suggestion is don't cover too much. Don't concentrate too much for this embryology and the history topics. This is the last time revision. So what is the most high yielding topic? That is the, yes, your neuro part. So I will tell you later. Yes. But remember, one question from the general anatomy, definitely it will be asked. One question from the embryology, yes, it will be asked. And one question from the histology, yes, it will be asked. So we can guess what are the questions which are going to come in your mid-2019. But because these are less output topics, so we will see these topics later. So what is the maximum output topic? For your anatomy, that is the neuro part. Again, can you see here? The neuro part can be divided into the head neck face part and your brain and the spinal cord part. Yes, head neck face. How we will study the neuro? First, we are going to describe the outer part. Then we will go for the inner part for the better understanding. Okay, so head neck face part. What are the various important topics? Yes, can you see? For the head neck face part, first we have to deal for the skull and the foramen. Definitely, Dan show that in your exam, any one question related with the skull or any foramen, definitely it will be asked. It is a general pattern. You are going to see for the various question paper from the previous foramen oval has been asked many times in your exam. Previously, it was asked in one line question, then image based question. Now prepare, it may be asked as a 3D rotating image. But yes, the skull and the foramen, any kind of the foramen can be asked. And any RT may be asked, just like the recent DNB exam, there was the question, there was the image over the indication over the terion, and the question was which artery is related with this terion? Yes, your answer was the middle meningeal artery. So definitely one question will be asked from the skull and the foramen part. It is very high yielding expected topic. And what are the other question? Vertebra. Yes, vertebra is not too much important for this time, but few years back there was the one line question. And few years previous M's exam, there was the question, third part of the vertebral artery passes through which part of the vertebra? Image based question. So yes, again it is the important topic, but only 50% probability you can say. But yes, you have to remember the vertebral topic. It may be related with the cervical vertebra, thoracic vertebra, lumbar or the sacrum also. But you must know about the vertebra. Yes, what are the other topic? Scalp. As you know, in the class, I taught you magic of five. Scalp, yes, five layers are there. Yes, there is the five arteries for the scalp, five nerves in front of the ear, five nerves behind the ear, and the five applied. So in this way, you have to revise. As you know, the revision, the revision gives perfection. So revise the previous things. Don't study any new thing at this time. So yes, you have to study the scalp. Then after the study of the scalp, you have to study this face part. Yes. This phase part, you have to study layer by layer, skin, superficial fascia, deep fascia, absent ear, and then muscle, panniculus carnosus muscles are there. The muscles of the Priya Prakash warrior, yes, you have to study the face part according to the muscle, and then you have to also study the vein, the artery, the nerves of the face lymphatic drainage of the face and after this face part you have to study the neck as you know this neck part is divided into the anterior triangle in front of the sternocleidomastoid behind the sternocleidomastoid there is the posterior triangle and last one below the occipital bone there is a suboccipital triangle 
So in this three headings, you have to study, you have to revise this neck part. And after that, one very important topic that is the dural venous sinuses or the cavernous sinus. It is a very important topic for you. Yes. Cavernous sinus is very most important along with that superior sagittal sinus, inferior sagittal sinus, great cerebral vein of the gallon, yes, torcula herophili, how there is the formation of the internal jugular vein, how there is the formation of the external jugular vein, you have to study this all the things, yes. This is very important topic and you have to remember according to the 41st edition of the Grey's Anatomy, the maxillary nerve is not passing through the lateral wall. And yes, in the same paragraph, in the Gray's 41st edition, there is one update about the Dorelos canal. So you must remember about these updates. Okay. So after this topic, you have to study the cranial nerves. Definitely, high probability, cranial nerve will be asked in your exam. In the recent answer, again, cranial nerves has been asked. You have to remember, cranial nerve is very important topic as well as the cranial nerve nuclei, you have to study in the brainstem. stem. So definitely, one question will become from the skull and the foramen, one question will come from the cranial nerves as well as the cranial nerve nuclei. These are the highly expected topics. Yes, now after this, you have to study about the gland. As you know, there are the three salivary gland, parotid gland, which is very important topic for the PGI Chandigarh. But in the NIT also it is important. Yes, parotid gland you have to study, submandibular gland you have to study along with the correlation with the ENT. Sublingual gland is not too much important, but you have to just see for the ENT purpose. And more important is all the gland that is the thyroid gland. No excuse with the thyroid gland. Again, anatomy is the subject which correlates all the subjects. When you are studying the anatomy, you have to correlate with other. Remember, thyroid, breast and the hernia. One question will be definitely asked in your exam. Either it may be related with the anatomy or it may be related with the surgery, physiology, Okay, yes, it may be related with the ENT, but thyroid, breast, hernia, these are very important topics. So, in topic of the gland, you have to study all the salivary glands as well as thyroid gland. After this, yes, ganglion. Ganglion is very hot topic for the PGI Chandigarh. But previously, few years, the ganglion topic are going to be asked in the recent NEET exams also, especially the parotid gland, which is related with the otic ganglion you have to study. Okay, as in my previous lectures, live classes, I told you ganglion is very nice topic, very beautiful topic and very simplified basics topic. Okay, so you have to study this ganglion. Yes, after this ganglion, ENT related topics. Yes, one question from the lens it will be asked. It may be question from the anatomy or ENT. One question from the fence, it may be asked. Yes, from the ear, one question may be asked. From the nose, from the tongue and the from the tonsil. So these are the high important topic. It may be that these questions are not from the anatomy. They are from the ENT. But yes, definitely for the preparation of the ENT, you have to go through the basics of the anatomy. That's why you have to study these topics. Then eye related topics. Yes, one question from the ophthalmology session will be definitely asked. There will be the certain kind of the portions of the eyeball and the examiner will ask which cranial nerve has been affected or which muscle has been affected. So definitely you have to study the eye, you have to study the ENT related topics. Okay. So after this all, now come to the brain. Yes. When we will discuss about the brain, then I told you in my previous videos that always study the neuroanatomy, the spinal cord and then brain part from lower side to the upside. First, you have to cut this spinal cord, then you will come at this part and this part is the brain stem. In brain stem, you have to study first the medulla, after the medulla, you have to study the pons and after the pons, you have to study the midbrain and after that, you have to study the brain. So, in that same order for your revision, for the quick revision, you have to study the spinal cord. Again, the spinal cord is divided into the grey matter and the white matter. Grey matter means nucleus in the simple language. At this quick time, the grey matter is the nucleus and the white matter is the tract. So, you have to study various nucleus in the spinal cord. As, as you know, in the recent AIMS exam, there was, was, there was one question, substantial gelatinous nucleus, which is responsible for the carrying to the pain sensation. So, yes, this nucleus is important. You have to know what are the 10 lamina of the raxel for the spinal cord gray matter. And yes, white matter. White matter. In the white matter of the spinal cord, there is a bundle of the exons. The bundle of the exons in the white matter, they are known as a tract. Yes, this tract is not only important for the anatomy, 
but you have to correlate with physiology and as well as for the medicine also. So this is important topic. It may be that question will not come directly from the spinal cord, white matter, gray matter, but it will correlate with other clinical. Okay, so then after spinal cord, you will go, you are going from down to upside, then you will study the brain stem and definitely no excuse, cranial nerve nuclei as well as cranial nerve. You must study about this. Okay, so when you are studying the brain stem, you have to divide into the medulla, then pons and the midbrain. You have to cut these structures. Kindly see my previous video, how we have to study the neuroanatomy. And remember, whenever you are studying medulla, then you have to immediately study the syndromes related with the medulla. Yes, as you know, lateral medullary syndrome and the medial medullary syndrome, very most, very commonly asked question. And yes, it was the question, the lateral medullary syndrome or the Wellenberger syndrome, it has been asked in your previous exam, near to 2018. And again, the pons and the related syndrome, you have to cut the pons at the lower part and upper part. At the lower part, you will find the facial colliculus, okay? And the upper part where again the center cannot close, okay? So you have to study the pons and the syndrome, facial colliculus syndrome, as well as the cerebropontine angle syndrome. What is the pontine hemorrhage? These all things you have to correlate. And then midbrain syndrome, again, midbrain you have to cut for the two times, the lower part and the upper part. And you have to study the three syndromes. On the posterior part, there is a perinor syndrome, P for posterior, P for perinor syndrome. In the between part, there is a Benedict syndrome, B for between, B for Benedict syndrome. And on the W part, you know, when you are drawing the midbrain, there is a W shaped area has been formed. So in the W part, there is the Weber syndrome. And again, I will, call, I will uh, recall you that in the previous need 2018 the question has been asked about the Weber syndrome you can say that this Weber syndrome is a question from the medicine but when you will get the clear theory clear concept about this syndrome when you are knowing about the various section of the medulla after this all now this brain part okay you are studying first the spinal cord, then brain stem, then you have to study the brain part. Again, brain part is divided into two parts, gray part and the white part, gray matter and the white matter. Gray matter means broad main area, okay? Yes, broad main area, functional area, it is a very important topic. In this 2018 exam, hat trick, broad man's area has been asked continuous three times. It has been asked in your NEET exam, then it has been asked in your DNB exam and also it has been asked in the EMS. In the recent EMS, the question has been asked about the paracentral lobule. Again, this paracentral lobule, it is the part of the gray matter. Okay. So what you have to do, you have to study the gray matter and after that you have to study the white matter. How can you remember the white matter? Yes, ACP, Rathor. Yes, ACP Rathor, Akshay Kumar movie, ACP, A for association fiber, C for commissural fiber, P for projection fiber. Okay, among this, the commissural fiber, the largest band is the corpus callosum and P for projection fiber, which structures are projecting from the brain or in or into the brain, they are the tract. So yes, corpus callosum is example of the commissural and the tracts are example of the projection fiber and which one is the classical example of all the three types of the ACP fiber, yes, your answer is the formics. Why I am telling you? Because you have to remember that corpus callosum has been asked many times, many times, many times in the NEET as well as EMS. But nowadays, the EMS and the NEET people, they are asking the fornix. So you must know how to identify the fornix in the brain section and what are the various features of the fornix. So this is the important topic. Yes, again, after this all, when you have completed the brain part, then you have to cut the brain. And within the white matter, you will find again gray matter. What I am telling you, yes, there is the brain, outer part is the gray matter, then white matter, then again there is the gray matter. Gray matter, white matter and again there is the gray matter. The gray matter mass, which are situated within the brain at the basal part, they are known as basal nuclei. Yes, they are situated at the base part and they are gray matter, that's why nucleus. If these structures are situated outside the brain, then you will say ganglion. Yes, it is not the basal ganglion, it is the basal nuclei. The correct term is the basal nuclei. The more detail I will tell you in the live class or in my videos. Okay, now after this basal nuclei, you will see the section of the brain. When you will study all this thing properly, then you will be able to identify what are the various structures within the brain. And definitely, damn sure, one question from the section of the brain or any inner structure of the brain will be asked. 
and remember after this section on the brain when you will study proper then you will be able to identify the ct mri various imaging procedures in the radiology so this neuro part is not only important for the anatomy but it is also important for the ENT, ophthalmology, medicine, neurosurgery part as well as radiology part. That's why the, if your anatomy is weak, then all the subject will become weak. Okay. So remember, you have to make strong for you. You have to make strong your anatomy. Now, after this neuro part, which will be asked in hundred percent questions of the anatomy, approximately thirty to fifty percent question will be related with the neuro part. Either the spinal cord, brain, midbrain syndrome or the head neck face portion. So concentrate more and more for this topic and now come to the other part. Can you see this is the abdomen? Yes. What are the topics?